Alright, 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 here we go, back again on the other side of the coin. Alright, we are back again on the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. It's really good to be back uh, doing yet another video. Hope you guys have been enjoying the content. Uh, it is the international break and um, there's not much to really report on. However, today though, today... There's a lot of Chelsea transfer news that um, that are materializing, and I would love to know what you all think about this. And um, yeah, let's get straight into this, ladies and gentlemen. As I said, heaps of heaps of news um, to go through. There's Christensen news. There's Rudiger news update. As you all know, every time an international break comes along, Rudiger and Christensen are going to be top of the list in order to talk about. And then there's also about Saul Ross Barkley. Timo Werner to Barcelona. Apparently, Barca is showing some interest. Whether it's true or not, we'll see. But it's an interesting discussion to have. First of all, let's start with Christensen. Apparently, Christensen wants a three contract. Chelsea have actually given him a five. But let's let's look at what uh, what the news is all about. Simon Phillips, off the back of what Matt Law was saying, Andres Christensen's Chelsea future hinges on whether. Or not an impasse over his, over the terms and length of his proposed new contract can be broken. Um, and then it goes on to say it is understood the deal was initially delayed over an adjustment in the demand being made by Christensen's agent. And then Chelsea was stunned by a proposal to bring the length of the contract down from five years to three years. So essentially, Chelsea is actually giving him a five year contract, but Christensen and his agent is actually asking for three now. This is interesting to think about. There's so many thoughts that's flying in my head, and I 100% want to hear what you all have to say about this. I'm thinking Christensen doesn't want to tie himself down on a long-term contract. He, is, he wants to keep things open. He's not completely sold by the idea that he will finish up at Chelsea. I think he's got eyes elsewhere as well. I mean, he's just keeping it all open. Um, three contract, meaning if he does well over the next three years, he can demand for a contract extension with higher pay, or he opens himself up to move elsewhere if, if his demand is still high. And also, if there is a team that's willing to purchase him, three-year contract is something that's not that difficult to break. Um, and the transfer fee potentially shouldn't be that much if they you know, go in for Christensen on the second year or even in the final year. So it's very interesting how he's strategically looking out for himself, which is fine. But I don't know if it completely works, works for Chelsea, though, um, because Chelsea wants to have a situation where they want to be in control. So this is, this is interesting what's happening here. However, it's well sort of touted that. Christensen wants to stay. This is what, you know, via the Chelsea uh, fifth stand app, Andres Christensen hopes to sign a new contract soon. And he said it many a times that he's happy. He's happy where he is. But very interesting what's going on with the contract situation. Let me know what your thoughts are about the whole Christensen thing. I mean, is he thinking that there could be a possibility to leave Chelsea down the track and also could be a possibility to get even a bumper deal down the track if his form continues. So something to look at. Now, let's have a look at the next piece of news, which is Rudy to leave. Ladies and gentlemen, this is straight from Matt Law, London is Blue podcast, um, tweeted by PYS. Chelsea are only prepared to go so high for Antonio Rudiger's contract as it stands. Antonio Rudiger is leaving Chelsea. Rudiger's camp are waiting for offers in January to see what they receive. Um, it goes on to say Chelsea's January plans. I think they'll go back in for a defender. Now, once again, look, I've said it many times on my channel that I I wished Chelsea had just given everything that Rudy wanted. But there's some rumours that Rudy wants more than 200000 I don't know whether it's true or not. And that seems to be the issue. Rudy is closer to the 30-year mark. Um, you know, that amount of money is probably a lot of money. But then again, Chelsea, I heard, you know, were willing to offer players like Jules Kunde, who weren't even part of the setup, you know, not only pay for the transfer fee, which is approximately about 60 million euros a pound, something like that, and then also give him 200,000 per week pounds. So how are you giving someone like Jules Kunde, or willing to give someone like Jules Kunde that much money 
Well, they've not done anything for Chelsea. Not really proven anything worldwide either, to be honest, in world football. Cool. Jules Kunde is a very good player, but he's not proven. He's not world class. Rudiger, I'd have to say, is borderline world class, if not world class. Do you know what I mean? So that's where I stand with the whole Rudiger situation. But, guys, I think we might have to resort to the situation that he's most likely to leave because he's on the last G. Chelsea's in absolute no control of this. It's sad because Chelsea were looking to sell him. Um, so I can't really blame Chelsea either that they've left it for this late. It's just over the last 24 months, um, sorry, over the last 12 months, um, not even 12 months, less than 12 months since um, Tuchel took over, Tuchel took over earlier this year, that, that Rudiger started to play well. So once again, let me know what your thoughts are. Is Rudiger staying, Rudiger leaving? I just don't know whether I can see any solution here. I think Rudy is asking for a lot of money, and rightly so, rightly so. He's going to get that level of money, whether it's Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, PSG, even Juventus. So we'll see what happens here. I think this one may be a foregone conclusion. I hope if he is leaving that we can rejoice his you know, time at Chelsea and hopefully give him the Premier League. Yeah, that, that'd, be, that'd be insane if we can win the Premier League for him. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, um, actually, we'll go to the Saul news next up and then we'll talk about um, Timo Werner. Saul has emerged as an option for Juventus in January if his Chelsea loan is cut short. Now, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised about this particular news. Once again, whether it's true or not via tutoyuve.com, you know, that's for you guys to decide. But there could be some legs to this particular news. The reason why I believe there could be legs is because he's not really featured for us. And let's be honest, whenever he has featured, he hasn't been the greatest, except for that Southampton game. That last Southampton game in the Carabao Cup, he was actually looking pretty good. Some shots, uh, not heaps long range, but just outside the box, a header. He should have at least had a goal in that Southampton game, to be honest, uh, in the Carabao Cup. And um, he was looking good. Uh, you know, Defensively, he was good. With the ball, off the ball, he was good. He wasn't getting muscled out like the way he was against Aston Villa. But I can't see his loan, you know, even if it lasts the whole season, I can't see us permanently signing him next season, to be honest. And with so much competition in midfield at the moment, with Ruben Loftus-Cheek's rise, Ross Barkley is ahead of Saul at the moment. I think Saul can see where this is going. He would have to impress massively. Look, not that he can't change. Things can change rapidly. The way it's changed for Ruben Loftus-Cheek is unbelievable. So I'm not going to sit here and say it can't change, but it's very unlikely. He would have to have a blinder the next game when Thomas Tuchel gives him an opportunity, um, score a goal, assist, and really put yourself out there. So I'm not surprised if he leaves in January and goes to Juve because he's, he's really surplus to requirements at the moment. Uh, once again, let me know. Let me know. Do you want to still keep him till the end of the season? Personally, I think he could leave. I think he could leave and, and we wouldn't be hurt at all. This is interesting, ladies and gentlemen. This is very interesting. Barca are considering signing Chelsea forward Timo Werner on loan in January via marker. Once again, I'm not sure how big this particular publication is. Um, I think they're pretty big in Spain, but how much do they know? I'm not really sure, especially when it comes to Chelsea news. Xavi has just recently gone to Barca, and I'm not really sure Timo Werner is really a Xavi type of player. I mean, Xavi, back in his days, played with such highly technical players with amazing ball control. I don't know if Timo Werner fits that mold. And Timo Werner's space creation is not going to be something, the only factor that Xavi is going to look for up front. Um, look, as much as we back Timo, as much as we love Timo, even I have doubts whether he's going to be a long-term Chelsea player. There's a lot of things that he needs to improve on. Let, let's not sit here and kid around ourselves. His technicality is something that needs to be worked on. Right now, I'd actually put Callum and ahead of him in that in that sort of inside forward on the left side, You know, even if, if you want to call it as a second striker situation. Callum's ball control is so much better, um, and he's been very creative in recent times for us. And I want to see more Callum. Callum and uh, Romelu Lukaku is something I really want to see. Not to say that 
Timo is not going to get game time. Of course he is, but I don't think he wants to be a rotational player. I think he wants to play for Germany on a regular basis. And in order to do that, he needs to play for Chelsea on a regular basis. But there's a lot to desire for in his skill set. He does a lot of things good. His attitude is great. His work rate is great. But there's his, his pace is fantastic, but his finishing is not the greatest. His technical ability is not the greatest. His touches are not the greatest. His passing is not the greatest. So whether Barca is interested, I'm not sure. But I don't think Timo Werner is a long-term player for Chelsea. That's my opinion. But I want to know what you guys have to say about this. Honestly, that, that this is how I feel about him. Last but not least, to round up the Chelsea transfer news situation, Newcastle wants Ross Barkley. Now, this is what uh, team, team Talk was saying. Uh, Newcastle are leading the race over Everton and Leeds to sign Chelsea midfielder Ross Barkley in January. A loan-to-buy deal is likely. Can you imagine if he goes back to um, Everton, uh, the the boy wonder from Everton back to Everton? Leeds as well, I think, would be okay, but Leeds want workhorses in midfield. They want midfielders that are going to run all day long. And I don't know whether Ross Barkley completely fits that. But Newcastle, I think this is a very good move for, uh, move for Ross Barkley. Um, once again, Ross is another player that doesn't seem see too much, too many minutes, even though recently he's got that start and. Thomas Tuchel said it wasn't pity stuff. He deserved it. He, he's been doing well in training and he deserved it. He's been off the coming off the bench and actually his impact's been fantastic for us. So I wouldn't mind seeing Ross Barkley just being that fringe player for us till the end of the season, but I can imagine why he would want to go. His aspirations, Newcastle obviously with the money could offer him a big, you know, good wages. And it could be a good situation for Newcastle, you know, playmaker. Ross Barkley is a decent player. He just needs a manager that believes in him. I think Eddie Howe would would do would do good with a player like Ross Barkley. Up front, they've got Callum, um, Callum Wilson. They've got players like Joe Willock, St. Alan Maximin, uh, Miguel Almiron. Yeah, they've got quite a few different players there. And I think Ross Barkley would actually be a very good signing for them, in my personal you know, opinion. And in all honesty, I think if Ross goes, then Saul might just stick around because we don't want to be thin in midfield. But then again, we're not really thin... Ross, a lot of people think, plays as an inside forward, but I don't think so. He, he's been playing, the times he's been playing for Chelsea, he's been playing in the middle, centrally. So it almost becomes theory in midfield, and then you've got the two up front. So, look, it's not going to be the end of the world for us, certainly, if he was to leave. But this is probably a good opportunity for Ross Barkley and a good opportunity for Newcastle. But once again, let me know what your thoughts are about all of these news that we've gone through, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the Chelsea Roundup. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've honestly enjoyed connecting with you guys. Uh, once again, thank you so much for all the support you guys have shown me in recent times. Please smash the like button if you're here till now. Uh, honestly, I can't stress how much the likes. The likes are the only thing that drives the channel's growth and, and the channel's progression. So please, if you've enjoyed this until this time, smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification as well to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, see ya.